Oh man, it's been so amazing. Uh, this is my uh, JSConf. 2010 was my first ever tech talk, ever. Uh, and I only got in because uh, Felix Geisendorfer couldn't make it because of an Icelandic volcano. So <laughs> that was my intro to this whole thing. Uh, and it's been an amazing ride uh, just to see uh, the conference grow and the community grow on the conference. Super amazing, which is why I am super psyched. Chris and I have been working on this for a while, and I want to let you guys know that Chris and I are taking Ken Henderson open source. <laughs> it's not ready yet, uh, but next month on GitHub, <laughs> the entire genome as a JSON file. Uh, if you want YAML, you just got to issue a pull request. So thank you, Ken. Sorry about that. We can truncate if you want. Or, uh, that's cool, don't worry about it. Uh, but no, seriously, I was actually going to give a talk about uh, this tech like idea I had that was like a thing. But like, I was like, well, this seems like really, really good timing to give a talk about uh, building community. This is last call, uh, which, do you remember the semi-sonic song, <laughs> Closing Time, uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So the idea is, well, if it is closing time, uh, let's, what, you, what do you do when a bar closes? You go home and you drink at home, <laughs> hopefully with other people, but definitely not in the bar that's closed. So uh, I want to talk, talk to you about uh, building Borough.js. Uh, and so first of all, I'll tell you what Borough.js is if you don't know. Borough.js is for month, sorry, monthly events, OK? So there's Brooklyn.js, there's Manhattan.js, there's Queens.js, and there's Jersey script. Okay, so these are things that didn't exist, you know, even two years ago. The last JS Conf US that I was at was 2013. None of this stuff existed, and now two years later, we have this whole amazing community. Brooklyn JS, you know, Brooklyn, uh, that is where I live. You know, um, who would you know? I guess um, Bernie Sanders was born there. Hillary Clinton has her headquarters there. Uh, Manhattan JS, and this is Manhattan, obviously, it's the, it's the city. Uh, who lives there? Um, Donald Trump, you might know him. Uh, David Koch of the Koch brothers, you might know them. Uh, Tom Dale uh, lives in Manhattan. Uh, gives you a kind of a flavor of that. Queens, if you don't know Queens, uh, it's very interesting because um, it's kind of a holding pen when you're priced out of Brooklyn, but before you retire to Florida, that you live in Queens. And then Jersey Script is, obviously I don't have to tell you, a lot of uh, interesting JS products. Uh, humor come out of that from Jen Schiffer to John Stewart. Uh, so that's our family. This is Borough JS, and I want to tell you, it's, it's like literally, you cannot swing a dead cat in New York without hitting a JavaScript meetup now. It is amazing. Every week of the year, there is a JavaScript meetup. It is so amazing, and it's like just, it's an amazing. So I want to tell you the story of these 10 people. Did is that 10? Did I count that right? Off by one? No. Okay. Uh, and then how, what we, like, how we took, you know, the JavaScript community from like kind of lame to like pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to take it all the way back to 2013. Um, I was living in Tokyo. Uh, I was, it was my first tech job, and I, uh, you know, I decided to actually move to Brooklyn. Uh, and so I was super, super psyched. You know, in Japan, Brooklyn is like a huge brand. Like, there's like bars named Brooklyn, and you can go and have a cocktail named after Brooklyn. And then when you're hungover the next day, you can have Brooklyn pancakes, and then like, you don't have pancakes, you know, Mr. Donuts, and they give you as like swag, like Brooklyn jar, which is just literally a Mason jar. <laughs> call them, they call it a Brooklyn jar because it's more of a brand than Mason, who I actually looked up. He has nothing to do with Brooklyn except he died there. That's it. Uh, or, he, and this is probably my favorite, they have Brooklyn Roasting Company. This is an actual Brooklyn, legit Brooklyn roaster uh, in Brooklyn on J Street. Uh, and at Brooklyn Roasting Company in Tokyo, they sell Brooklyn Brewery beer, which they didn't even do that in America, so it's like clearly just a brand. Ah, screw all that stuff. I wasn't interested in that. I was interested in moving to Brooklyn because John Resig, the guy who basically taught me JavaScript, lives there. Uh, he lives in uh, Park Slope. Uh, this guy, Jeremy Ashkenaz, who like built all the stuff that I was using at the time, like Backbone and CoffeeScript and Underscore, uh, he built that. He lives in uh, Brooklyn Heights. Uh, this guy, Ryan Dahl, you know, 2009, where Node came out, that was Ryan Dahl. Um, to give you some perspective here, this is after he was John Lennon. <laughs> but before he was Sleepy Douglas Crockford. <laughs> kind of in the middle. <clears throat> so I get to Brooklyn, and there's this thing, BKJS, I'm like, awesome! I'm going to go meet all these folks at meetups. And like, it had been defunct a year later because their final meetup, can I actually do this? Yeah, zoom in here. Their final meetup was uh, a beer JS with Brian LaRue. And that's when the meetup ended. <laughs> So, 
don't invite him to your meetup. Uh, so that was that kind of faded by the wayside. I was like, okay, let's cast the net a little wider. There's got to be like an NYC scene, NYCJS. It's actually a really good meetup. I actually went a long time ago. I met Aaron Quint there. That was super Ooh. awesome. Um, and I checked their website, and you look at their last three meetups, and they're all send to touch meetups, which is like that's not a, kind of a code smell for a for a meetup if it's like literally one technology. So that was kind of not cool. Basically, it was a total wasteland. There was no one. Okay, maybe Will Smith and his dog, but otherwise no one. And so. I was like, well, that's kind of sad uh, that we don't have a scene here. Oh, well, I guess I moved here for nothing. <laughs> but then I decided to like, go to some other parts of the world and see how they did community and conferences and stuff. I went to Austin. By the way, this is tilt shift from Apple Maps. It's amazing. That's sort of like not an actual photo. Um, I went to Austin. That was super cool. I went to TXJS. I met Brian J. Brennan, uh, who is, uh, I will talk about later. Um, TXJS is a super awesome a regional conference. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I guess it's now uh, going to maybe the, one of the largest uh, in uh, the US now, coming in 2016. I went here to Amelia Island. That was super cool, because like, there's all you awesome folks, and I had a really good time here. Um, and then I went to Berlin, and then I went to Reject.js, which is inspired by a conference that's inspired by this one, which is kind of amazing. Then I went to CSSConf EU, and that was another conference that was inspired by, well, kind of uh, inspired, well, I mean, JSConf EU inspired CSSConf EU. Uh, they kind of run as a pair. Uh, that was really cool. They let me do some cool stuff. I gave an entire presentation in CSS about the Berlin Wall, and I used the border collapse. That was a, the, it was, it's funny in German, okay? Hey. <laughs> Uh, I went to JSConf, they let me crowd surf, uh, they let me sing songs. Uh, this one is, I sang, <laughs> niche, that's niche. <laughs> this is me singing Under the Sea with Manny Lauderdale um, to, uh, I sang Objective C. I'm not going to do it now, so don't ask. Uh, that was super, super fun, and then I got back to Brooklyn, I'm like, wait a minute, this is still kind of a wasteland. That kind of sucks. We should totally change this. All of this inspired stuff that I had done for, uh, you know, over the course of a few months, it was super, super awesome and totally wanted to bring that home. So I always want to take JSConf and like shrink it down to 8.33333333% its size and then like spread it over a year. That was kind of like the idea. Just take that vibe. And that was, that was my idea behind Brooklyn JS. And so I ran into this garbage monster. <laughs> Brian J. Brennan, uh, future, at that point, future speaker at JSConf, he, gave, he closed JSConf last year in 2014 uh, with a talk called Being Human, which is weird because he's not a human, he's a garbage monster. Uh, he's in a shoegaze band. Uh, he's super cool. Shoegaze, they call it shoegaze because they look at their shoes while they're playing guitar. He can't even see his shoes because he has so much hair, sorry. Uh, he appreciates craft beer. Uh, he, he appreciates his pictures of him appreciating craft beer. That's really cool. He also owns one shirt. Little, little secret there. Um, yeah, so we're like, Brian, let's do this. Let's, let's take this JSCon flavor, which we're both familiar with, and let's like shrink it down and like turn it into like a, a, like a monthly thing. So what do we do? Of course, copy everything Chris Williams does. Um, so, we, and so yeah, so basically, let's take this model. And you know, it's, it, I mean, he's basically, I mean, he, he it's, you know, the two of us did it together. It was, he was basically the Laura Williams to my Chris Williams except for the fact that I did all the work, so he was basically Chris Williams to my Laura Williams. That's cool. <laughs> We're not going to go into details there. But we went to Chris's repo, and we, and we, we copied his logo, and we made it our own in like a kind of a subway motif uh, after the J train and the S train, neither of which I recommend taking. Uh, we made a website that's kind of like a, like a metro, like a subway map. Uh, we made posters. Uh, we uh, copied the code of conduct, which is like, that's like such a no-brainer slam dunk now that like, you know, if you have JavaScript community, they're probably, they've probably been here and they probably are familiar with it. So that makes everything so much easier. It's one less thing to uh, shave a yak on, which is really nice. Or bike shed, I don't know. Are they the same thing? I don't even know. Anyway, uh, JS code of conduct is such a slam dunk. It's basically, uh, it's like, it's a no smoking sign for your meetup. Like, it's like, just, it's, like it's so easy. So uh, I, I really am so glad that uh, Chris did that. Because um, it makes it easier for the organizers too, um, not just the attendees. Because you can, you don't have to have all sort of fuzzy thinking while you're doing the event. You got a fine line, which is super, super nice. So we got the code of conduct, we got the logo, we got the posters. Uh, we found a really nice venue. We totally lucked out on this. It is a super, super cool bar. Uh, they have all sorts of awesome craft beer, except Bud Light Lime. Um, that's like local. This is actually a map of like a distorted map where Brooklyn's huge uh, of basically the Mid-Atlantic and New England stage. Super cool. It's like a really awesome vibe. You know it's cool because it's like in Japanese magazines that are like all about Brooklyn. That was really cool. Uh, cool. So we found a venue. That was awesome. Oh yeah, rap battle. Had a rap battle with Oakland. 
Uh, Oakland is basically the Brooklyn of San Francisco, I guess. Uh, and so I was talking smack to Substack. That was cool. Uh, yeah, and that was it. And then we were like, so we did all the planning, and we sent it, you know, we like put tickets on, and like we, it was free. Awful idea. Uh, and then, because lit it literally sold out in like an hour, and like, you know, I had to send an email to everyone like, hey guys, remember the thing where I said tickets for free? Well, guess what? They're not free. You have to pay $5. Um, and then tickets sold out again. I was like, ah. So uh, anyway, it was, it was fine. Uh, they were $5, which is such a bargain, especially in New York City. So the idea is this. We would do five talks. It would just be five 10-minute lightning talks. Um, of course, going to start with John Resig, because uh, he like, started it all for me, at least. Um, don't start a meetup without having him speak at your first meetup. It's my advice. It's <laughs> we had a lot of awesome other folks uh, help out. Uh, uh, there's Jen Schiffer. She's taking a selfie, but I think she gave a talk after that. Uh, she's a super awesome, awesome person to have in the community. I cannot imagine uh, the New York scene without her. We have a lot of journalism in New York, so Rich Harris from The Guardian. You get Vijith Asser from The New York Times and Michael Donahoe from The New Yorker. You have, here are some familiar faces, there's Zara Jabini uh, giving a talk about Ember Components, Ember, Ember Components, sorry. Um, and uh, so she gave a talk, there's Tracy giving a talk. If you like familiar faces, here's some more. There is Amy, and there's Pam, and there's Matt Pawasaki, and there's Earl, and there's Lynn, and there's Jane, and they have all spoken at Brooklyn JS. There's Charlie, I couldn't find a picture of him, I don't know why. Uh, and then there, <laughs> I don't have a picture yet, but this is Rachel, who is, uh, who is right there. Uh, she's speaking actually this month at Brooklyn JS, and here she is singing karaoke in Brooklyn with Michael Rogers about, it was a, such a meta moment. It was amazing. Um, really other fo all cool folks in New York, we have really awesome folks in the area. Uh, this is uh, Mary Rose Cook uh, t uh, doing stuff with Code Lauren. We had Tiny Subversions come down from Boston. This is, he, makes, he makes these amazing apps. And this is where we're kind of leaving JavaScript and doing like more like webby stuff, kind of broadening a little bit. Uh, he does this thing where it like literally takes definitions from a dictionary and like, girl, you must be a blank because definition of thing. It's an amazing, <laughs> go to that website. It, it's so good. Um, other things we have, Bloomberg, sponsor of this conference. Uh, Bloomberg had this amazing article called, what is code? Who read this? Did anyone read this? You're lying. You did not read the whole thing. It's like 38,000 words. There's no way. And actually, so he came and he gave a talk about like how the color, background color actually changes the more you scroll down, the more you read. So if you take a screenshot, he knows that you didn't read it. It's amazing. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So he gave a talk about that. That was really, really cool. Uh, that was, by the way, the best-selling issue of Bloomberg of 2015. So awesome, awesome work. Uh, we had uh, Maureen uh, Haverbeck come talk about uh, all the stuff he's doing with WYSIWIMS. Um, that was really cool. Uh, we had, oh, this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Brennan Eichen in my meetup. <laughs> um, that was really cool. He had this. These are hot takes. This is amazing. This is so true. Microsoft is Mozilla, right? Am I right? Oh, it's amazing. So you heard it at Brooklyn JS first. Uh, and then, so he spent about two minutes talking about that, and he literally spent about like 10 minutes playing video games. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you, you're warned. If you invite Brennan Ike to your meetup, he's going to play video games. Uh, we had really we had these two uh, guys. We actually, so we started doing, like, let's do stuff with other languages. So we did Go. Um, for those of you not familiar with Go, Go is basically the language to which JavaScripters retire to when they get old. <laughs> It's the Florida of programming languages, basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, we had uh, this guy. You can't even see him because it's so dark. Uh, that's not Neo. Uh, that's um, Martin Kleppa. Uh, this is the thing. It's a quine. It's like running itself to create the whole thing. That blew my mind. Uh, this is Ben Newman doing stuff. This is like we did like we started doing a hardware theme event. So he had this thing where like he had a camera that filmed all of these random lights on the wall and then like calibrated it and it would like move his hands and like the light would change and like everyone goes yeah. Um, the guy who runs the bar that we hold a meetup in actually made a custom popsicle stick stamper, like an automated one. So like he, we had like custom popsicles with booze in them. That was super awesome. But the best part, and probably the best talk we've ever had, was this one. Uh, this is Super Mario Brothers World 2-2. Uh, if you're familiar with that, that's the underwater one. You can tell from all the water. Uh, and so Chris Williams came up from uh, the DC area, and what he did is he actually had, uh, <laughs> a, instead of a controller, he had a bunch of wires rigged to glasses of beer. Uh, there was a beer for left, there was a beer for right, and there was a beer for jump. And we had Rachel and Jen Schiffer and Mike, and what they would have to do is actually drink to get Mario like through <laughs> this thing, right? <laughs> but that's not even the best part. The best part is while we were doing it, this woman was actually playing, an accordion quartet was playing the actual theme song from the board. It was 
It was the most, it was the, like the biggest moment of synergy in like meetup history. It was amazing. Um, and then yeah, all sorts of cool stuff started to happen. Here's Jenna Zygen giving her very, very first tech talk. Uh, and then that talk actually got picked up by JSConf EU. So now she's speaking to like all these people. And then she gets hired by DigitalOcean. She's praying droplets here, just so you know. Uh, she's now our sponsor and she comes and talks every week. It's like just to see in two years, like all the stuff changed from, from just creating this uh, nutrient agar of community. Uh, here's uh, Mariko uh, Kosak. Is this your first tech talk or no? This is one of your first tech talks? First one, uh, again, she blows up. Uh, she, you know, speaking in Europe, uh, speaking in Singapore. Shout out over there uh, about knitting. She made us a thing. She made us a thing. Uh, that was really, really cool. We started doing different kinds of formats because like CSS Conf came into town and scheduled it for the same night as Brooklyn JS, and that was like what? But like let's do something together. So we did. We had a panel. Jen Schiffer, Mondo Amador. There's Chris Coyer and Claudina Sarahe, and we just did like a chat uh, about you know various issues. It was a uh, it was just a panel thing. It was new for us, uh, but it was amazing. And actually, what I just found out the other day, this guy Mondo Amador speaking at Queens JS. Uh, last week told us that he, because of that gig, got a job. The CTO of the company that he works at was at that meetup. Uh, and so that was actually really easy for him to just slide into that job. So it was like super awesome. So yeah, we try to get interesting speakers in. And one of the ways we do it is by the same way, very similar to what JSConf does. It's like a, you know, just basically a pull request. It's basically you just propose it. Instead of us curating the talks, would the talks come to us? Um, so you just go to GitHub, you edit two lines, and that's it, and you're in. Um, so then we had, you know, the talks, but, you know, it kind of is not enough, so, you know, after the talks, because, you know, people can't always get tickets, so we need to have, like, a BeerJS thing afterwards, people who can't get tickets, but we decided to innovate here, and instead of BeerJS, we now call it Beverages. <laughs> wow. That's, that's great. Wilman Duffy. Wilman Duffy. I don't, don't follow him on Twitter. Just look at his thing, but don't click the follow button. He's, he's an amazing, amazing guy. If you like this, by the way, you will love his Twitter feed. It's all puns. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, that was really cool, and it's funny because it's like beverages because well, for those people who don't drink beer, you know, one of the organizers of Brooklyn JS doesn't drink beer. Also, like half of Brooklyn is gluten free, so <laughs> beers, literally, literally, literally. Uh, so yeah, we did that. So we added the beverages, uh, and then what else is going on here? Uh, beverages, you know, it's it kind of extends. Like we close the tab at 1 a.m. It's uh, it's fun, and there's people who just who don't get tickets. It doesn't matter. They'll show up anyway. We have a table for them. We have some snacks. They can chill out and talk to folks. And then when everyone floods out after the event's over, it's a super cool thing. Um, what else is going on? So now it's you know it's it's me and Brian, and it's basically like the me and Brian show, and like you know we try to work a little bit of comedy in here. We ex we're explaining how far away Queens is. Like for people who give Jersey shit about being not a borough, like Queens is like super far away. Um, so we try to make it a little bit entertaining. So the intro actually is is has a kind of metastasized into this. It's like literally four talks worth of, of time, but the audience seems to enjoy it. Um, and if you're in the audience, you know it's hard to see sometimes, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> That's cool. This is, this is, yeah, this is just the hazard of, of, of coming to Brooklyn JS. Sometimes it works out pretty weird, um, but people like it. Uh, here's uh, Marine uh, Haverbeck uh, saying uh, he just came uh, like uh, last month, and he, he said this like super, super nice thing, because I met him at Berlin JS like way long ago, uh, and I was like, that's super sweet, until I saw the follow-up tweet. It's <laughs> cool, man. Cool. Thanks for coming to my meetup. Uh, yeah, so we can, now we got beverages. What else? So yeah, the intro's a little bit longer. That's fine, it's fine. Okay, it's cool. But uh, yes, hey, shut your mouth. <laughs> you. Uh, see all those black lines in between the talks? That was kind of an issue. I don't know if you've seen this screen recently, but we have the same projector. <laughs> Literally the same projector. And so between the talks, we have these sponsors and like we they pay us money to like have their logo on the screen and yet ViewSonic, who pays us nothing, is literally on the screen for like fifteen minutes a night. So that was like kinda not cool. So we wanted something to kinda like smooth it over and so we decided to basically take our format and basically fill in the gaps with music. Okay, so these are 10 minute talks, they're really fast, people talk as fast as I do. You need, because everyone's trying to squeeze all their ideas in 10 minutes, you need something to like decompress between talks and fill all that awkward silence of people setting up. So what we started, we looked to the community to find people who could do music. So this guy, uh, Vince Allen, who presented here, I believe recently, and he was in EU recently, uh, he, you know, talking about like a tornado simulation here, uh, he plays uh, bass. I'm sorry, no, uh, um, what do you call it, slack key guitar. That's really cool. Uh, here's Sandy. Uh, and she came and she actually played uh, piano with her uh, husband uh, who plays clarinet. That is actual speed, believe it or not. Um, 
Uh, so she played piano and clarinet for us. That was a cool duo. We had this guy uh, over there with the, what do you call it, hair? Uh, that's Adam Sontag. Uh, Adam Sontag helped us organize uh, the CSS Conf uh, thing that we did. And now he, he came and he played uh, Broadway, like 1930s show tunes. That was super awesome. Uh, Jen Schiffer came, teamed up with Adam. Karaoke night, that was really cool. Uh, we have, you know, uh, accordion artists. This guy with the guitar and the white shirt, he actually works at About Me, About Me. Uh, he has a whole band uh, of like 11 people. That was super awesome. This guy plays a Japanese, weird kind of Japanese flute. That was cool. Uh, also plays saxophone. We had this band come and play. This is like a old timey, what would you call it, uh, trio thing. That was really cool. We actually got a guy in the community, John K. Paul, to come in to sing, I've been working on a Rails app. That was fun. <laughs> Um, and then well, the thing is we have a house band actually and it's my barbershop quartet uh, because if I, didn't, if I didn't bring them to Brooklyn JS, we wouldn't have any gigs. So, uh, <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, let's throw them on. Uh, and so we're, we're called the Four Fives, but you wouldn't know that because every time we sing, it's the ViewSonic logo everywhere. <laughs> so now everyone in New York is conditioned to know that when they see the ViewSonic logo that I'm going <laughs> to sing for them, which is not true. <laughs> but... We, yeah, we're the ViewSonic Quartet, and one of the really cool things about running a meetup in 2015 is you actually get to engage with brands. That, who saw that coming? <laughs> that was super awesome. We pay this venue, 61 Local, Awesome Bar, 50 bucks a day, the entire day, and we use like literally like two hours upstairs. So while we're like, well, if we have the thing all day, let's actually make an event. And so what we did is we actually decided to, instead of just having the evening event, we have the evening event, we, we literally pre game the entire thing from 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on with programming. Do you guys program? 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 Yeah. So uh, we are all we're programming all day uh, in the borough of Brooklyn. Uh, we're trying to reclaim programming. It's like a, right? Take off the edge. This is programming. Uh, and so, yeah, it's cool. So the, here's the actual bar downstairs. You come in through this door. You know, there's a sign that tells you where it is. You come up. This venue's empty anyway. Let's fill it with tables. Let's fill the tables with people. And let's just hang out. You know, they have Fios internet, which is super cool, because that, for America, is really fast, for those of you out of town. <laughs> um, the best thing about the speed test thing is that uh, it, literally, it literally looks like this dude's pissing on New Jersey. <laughs> I don't blame him, but <laughs> uh, we have food. So like this, this venue, 61 Local, has this amazing kitchen. And so uh, they started just uh, doing catering for us. And so they have a triple kale salad, because you can't have enough kale in Brooklyn, um, with roasted veggies and like awesome fruits and like meats and stuff. And you know, we hang out and we work and we chat and we, and we dance. Uh, and you know, at 5 PM, go down to the bar for beverages. Uh, and then, you know, we start actually developing a relationship with this venue where they actually start catering to us. They actually started making a menu for us because we have so many people there in such a short time that they need actually food that turns around fast. So they make our own menu for us. They reserve a table for us. They are super, super awesome. So my recommendation you're doing a meetup, find a home. Uh, getting that out of your brain and not having to worry about, you know, having a meetup in a startup where, like, they're not recruiting this month, so, like, get out of here. Or, like, you know, they go to business, so get out of here. Or, like... Not dealing with that, 61 Local is happy to have us because we bring people with money who are not bankers, <laughs> right? Because in New York, the people with money are the bankers. They're douchebags. <laughs> so in San Francisco, the tech people are the douchebags. In New York, right, finance are the douchebags. So like, we're like, they're like, tech, it's awesome. <laughs> so thank you, Tom Dale, for teaching me that. I didn't, uh, I didn't realize that. That was amazing. Um, yeah, and so what we so we're like, okay, cool. So now we have this meetup. We're charging money. Where is this money going to go? Uh, we decided we, we, there's an organization called ScriptEd, and what they do is they go into schools and they bring volunteers to teach uh, web skills, and then they actually help place those kids into internships in New York and companies. Super, super, super awesome. So we're like, well, how can we actually? We're charging money. We're giving it to them, but how can I actually take it to the next level? What we started doing is instead of giving people tickets so that you buy a ticket and you get a beer. So like, take your ticket and give a beer, that's it. We're like, well, what if we actually spent more money to actually make custom 3D printed tokens, custom for each event, and then give those out? Like, it's gonna cost us $200 more, these things are like a, like a dollar a piece. It costs us more money, but it actually makes the bar tab go down, 
which is really, really cool. And it's also, it's a keepsake that you actually get to keep. So we actually, it's, this is almost like Google Analytics here, but you can actually see how many tokens each month are being redeemed. And you actually see like how successful um, you are in actually getting people to, uh, to hold on to them. We want them to hold on to the token instead of paying for a beer. A beer in Brooklyn at this place is like eight bucks. So if they can hold on to the token, that's like money that we save, which is super awesome. But what happens is we end up with all these tokens that I don't need. So this is actually a cruel cool thing. Uh, uh, I actually decided to upsource, up, upcycle these things into an actual thing. What we did is I got together with my fellow organizers uh, and we made plaques at some Brooklyn Brewery beer, as one does. Uh, and we took all the tokens after our token run ended and we made a plaque and, we, and then we sold the plaque. So take all the unwanted tokens, put them in plaques, sell the plaques back to people to make more money for Scripted, right? So the idea is now that you have a place where the money goes and they're doing awesome stuff and you want to give them as much money as possible, you start looking for opportunities to actually like tweak the algorithm to actually send them more money. So, you know, and we change things. This is another learning opportunity. We don't do tokens anymore. We do uh, wooden Metro cards, which is just the most precious thing ever. Um, uh, and that was actually a really good opportunity to learn how to use laser uh, etcher, a uh, laser cutter, which is super nice. Um, it doesn't always work. This is, uh, this is I'm sure if you work with, I, I work with bits and bytes, I don't work with, but like, it doesn't always work out. Yep. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa, well, there it is. So um, yeah, that was, that was a learning experience. But through all of this stuff, through all of the stuff that we did uh, to send money by, you know, getting, basically our event is a black box that takes developer intention and turns it into money for new developers, um, cynically. Um, but that's basically what we do. And over the course of our existence, we've been able to raise this much money for Scripted. Yeah. They're an amazing organization. They're super cool. And because we're tweaking this algorithm, we're actually trying to find ways to send them more money by actually getting people to not drink beer. Um, <laughs> It's really cool. So basically, our bar tab, uh, as you know, you'll see it go up as the event gets more popular. But then, actually, in the past few months, the bar tab has gone way down. And for the first time, last week, it went down to ninety dollars. That's literally like of the swag that we make. Like everyone is keeping it. No one is redeeming it for a beer. So that's like a total success. Um, so that's a really cool thing we did. If you want to see our finances, it's all in one gigantic JavaScript expression, as one does. <laughs> Our entire budget is one giant JavaScript expansion that exits, uh, I, hopefully an integer, probably not, it'll coerce, don't worry about it, it's JavaScript. But um, <laughs> if you end up with any money, like basically Travis CI yells at you because you exited with a code that's not zero. Does that make sense? Uh, and so that's how we do our budget. It's like, so just like, you know, if I'm embezzling money, like Travis is going to snitch on me. So that's how, that's how we figure that out. Uh, and we're starting to, if you guys want to support the cause, we actually have a few of these left over, I believe. Uh, we made socks. Check it out, socks. Uh, and you can buy them uh, if you go to Brooklyn JS. Oh, are you wearing your socks? Who's wearing their socks? Oh, yes. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Um, they look great on Boaz. They look great on Tom Dale. If you're one of those people, awesome. Um, but no, we have socks, and so they come with a free ticket. So that's really cool, because tickets go really fast. Tickets for our last event with Brendan Ike went in two rounds. The first one was 28 seconds, and the second round was seven seconds, and that's 100 tickets. So tickets sometimes, based on the speakers, are super, super hard to get. So by uh, tying it to the, well, you can get a ticket now, but you have to spend more money, and that money goes to Scripted. Total win-win. So find the win-wins. That has been awesome. So that's basically what we did. And then Brian and I, we grew the family. <laughs> so we did. Uh, and so now we have uh, Mariko Kosaka right there helping us out, uh, doing an awesome job. Woman Duffy, uh, who brought you beverages. Um, this is actually, yes, Woman Duffy, thank you. Um, this is actually my last month uh, as an organizer and as MC. Uh, so it's my last call. I have to go home, right? Um, but it, it, the, the meetup is in amazing, capable hands, and I'm sure you, you won't have seen the last of me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, not only did we grow the Brooklyn JS family, but we grew the other family, the Boro JS family. We basically now have siblings. And this is basically what I, what I want to say. This is like the best part of this whole thing is we created this community, you know, we tweaked some knobs to get things to work, and then it just created this environment where people can like interact and meet and like get jobs and like hang out and like there has been such demand for this. I don't know why it wasn't a thing even when I showed up, but uh, we made it a thing, and so now it's a thing. And so like now there are, you know, every week there is a meetup. So uh, I'll tell you a little about a few, because they have different, like we're all doing a different, we're siblings, like siblings have different personalities. Um, Manhattan JS started by uh, these uh, lovely ladies here. Uh, that's Brenda, Zara, and Rashane. Rashane is here. Rashane, where are you? Where are you? There she is. Um, they started Manhattan JS. It's super, super awesome. There they are. Brenda's on the mic. Um, they do a different thing instead of doing music between, because like the filling is a good idea, but you know, music is maybe not their thing. 
uh, they do battle decks, which is like a power karaoke PowerPoint. So like they'll just do like have Zara will choose random slides, and like some people have to just riff as if they're giving a presentation. That's like super super fun. Crowd loves it. Uh, and instead of doing 10 minute talks, five of them, they do 20 minute talks, three of them. So you, actually, you can actually have like a real talk. Brooklyn J has 10 minutes, not a lot of time. So they have awesome passion talks. Here's Charlie Robbins uh, speaking tomorrow, uh, talking about making um, chili, what is this? This is a hot sauce, sorry, uh, out of chili peppers. They make the hot sauce out of. Uh, also, here's another one. Hey, remember this one? Ah, it's Tracy. Uh, she gave a passion, passion talk about baking. Um, there was uh, Tyler Love gave this awesome, this is like a rave at this point. This is like so cool. Uh, it was like a musical thing. It was like a smoke machine. Uh, and just so you know, they started their first prezzo, John Resig. So I'm telling you, get John Resig to speak at your first event. It's surefire. Uh, meanwhile, Queens, you know, uh, Sarah Gorecki was, uh, you know, she had just come out of uh, Flatiron School. Um, she super, super awesome, gave a talk about Spider Solitaire at Brooklyn JS, and then peeled off and made her own thing in Queens. And it's an amazing thing. It's in an awesome venue with its own bar and its own bartender, and it's super chill. They have sweater, ugly sweater contests. Um, I don't think there's any winners there, <laughs> but that's cool. And we, you know, it's like siblings, so like we have fun together. So like we did a takeover with Queens, or like Brooklyn goes to Queens, and instead of doing tokens, we do coasters uh, and like do fun stuff like that. Or Jersey, you know, like we turned uh, the Brooklyn JS into a Jersey script, and like Brian and I went over and did a thing, and you know, then we go to a barcade afterwards and play video games. It's like super, super chill. So that's been super awesome. But it's not just Borough JS. Since then, this guy right here, the smiling guy right there. He came to our June event, which is a CSS Conf one, and he was like, all right, you convinced me. I'm going to start a more fun-based JS meetup in SF similar to Brooklyn JS. Awesome. He wrote this really nice uh, post on uh, Medium, uh, and then he started this thing called Waffle JS. Have you, heard, have you been to Waffle JS? Are there SF people here? Yeah. I haven't been yet. I, I really want to go. I heard it's super, super awesome. Um, and so he's trying, to, he's trying to basically take that culture uh, back to San Francisco. And then you know, uh, Jason Rhodes doing the same thing, Charm City JS uh, in Baltimore. Uh, he came and did some programming with a super chill guy, and now he's, uh, he's running his thing in, in Baltimore. And then it gets picked up by like Max Ogden, who's trying to take the waffle one into Portland. So if you're in Portland, please help him out. I would love to go to Waffle JS in Portland. Uh, and that's basically about it. So like, if you are thinking about uh, building a community like this, where you live to kind of carry the torch for JSConf, um, I recommend you just do it. <laughs> <laughs>